Dragon Age The Veil Guard is set to release in less than a week, and reviews are scheduled to come out about three days before launch. And I don't think you should trust some of those reviews, by the way. We'll get into that. And this game has already generated quite a bit of controversy. From the absolutely terrible initial trailer that they set out, to then people reacting with Bioware is dead, and then a bunch of content creators and press playing the preview build of the game a while back and coming out with pretty much glowing reviews, except some people, and then saying Bioware is back. And this is all really setting a stage for some drama to go down, to be honest. And in my opinion, it's going to be controversial at the end of the day, no matter what, because of what game it is, because who is making it, and because this is the studio that also represents the future of Mass Effect. And as we've seen with things like Bethesda, when you have a studio that holds some of people's favorite IP, and you're worried about their future, people tend to have really strong feelings about that. So I want to dig deep into this situation and explain why you should be very careful this time around if you're unsure to give this game your time or your money. And to do that, I want to talk about three things. Firstly, Bioware, the studio behind it, its legacy, and where it's headed. Number two, Dragon Age, the series that the game belongs to. And number three, the game itself. All of that is nice and clear in the timestamps below, just in case you don't care about some of that stuff and you're just curious about the game and want to know if maybe it's for you or not. But I do think that this is the order in which we should talk about these things. So hi, I'm Mug. If you're new here, welcome. And if you're not new here, welcome back. It's nice to see you again. If you enjoy the video, find it informative. Remember to hit the like button, helps the video reach farther, helps more people discover the channel. Oh, and real quick, a lot of the footage that you're going to see here is from previews from different channels. You're going to have the link in the description to all of the original videos that I took from, many of which are discussing a lot of the specifics of combat and the skill trees, including people like Boomstick Gaming, the preview from Skill Up from IGN. In case you want to watch it, it's all there. With that out of the way, let's get into it. Now, Bioware is one of the most legendary studios when it comes to RPGs. Early on, these guys pulled off things like Baldur's Gate and then KOTOR, Jade Empire, and then of course, Dragon Age and Mass Effect, before kind of going downhill with stuff like Mass Effect Andromeda and Anthem. And it's because of these things that people have this studio in quite high regard, even if now, it's kind of iffy where their future is headed. I personally am a huge fan of Bioware, and if I placed Mass Effect, uh, especially if I could consider it a whole trilogy, definitely among my favorite games of all time, and Dragon Age Origins is another one of those. So trust me, what I would like is for them to make amazing games, but this is where a very important conversation pops up around Bioware, that it's not Bioware anymore. This is why I find it pretty strange that people are talking about how this game is going to be the death of Bioware, as if Bioware were still a thing. A fun way to explain this is with the Ship of Theseus, which is a paradox or a thought experiment about how if you take a boat and over the years you need to replace every single part of the boat, is it still the same boat it was before just because it belongs to the same dude? Or if you've changed every single part of something, isn't it just a completely new thing at that point? Bioware, especially compared to other long-standing studios, has had a tremendous turnover. A lot of the people who made that studio what it was, a lot of the most creative, most outspoken people, some of the leads on some of their most important games, have all left. And most of what is there, especially at the higher end of people who have say in a lot of the projects, are now gone. It is Bioware in the torch that they are meant to carry and in the name, but not in the actual components that make it up, at least broadly. I'm sure that there's still plenty of veterans on the team here and there, but maybe not in the positions that you would care about. I think this is really important to bring up because it's often shown as something purely negative when I think that there is a positive to it as well. Bioware, in many ways, is kind of like the opposite of Bethesda in its progression while still ending up at the same place of kind of floundering and disappointing its fans. But Bethesda as a studio has retained a lot of senior talent. Even digging through credits, you can see so many different names in important positions repeat over and over again. But it's the fact that these people who have been there since the beginning seem to keep retreading the same ground and somehow manage to do it worse that has led them to where they are today, combined with their own host of problems. But when talking about 
the staff itself, Bethesda has mostly grown from its origins while retaining a large amount of talent, especially the senior talent. Bioware, on the other hand, it's not just about how much they've changed out their staff, it's about how, as a studio, they've always been changing. Unlike Bethesda just doing the same type of game over and over and over again, Bioware has done all sorts of stuff. From its CRPG Baldur's Gate-like origins, to things like KOTOR, to experimenting with Jade Empire, to its shooter mix with Mass Effect, all the way up to Anthem just being a looter-shooter live service thing. And I don't think any franchise from them really shows this better than Dragon Age, by the way. And that's why I think it's not necessarily the worst thing in the world, because when you do have senior talent that just keeps trudging along without innovating, you can also see your studio fail. But if you have a bunch of new people that are inspired by successes of the studio from before, kind of trying to carry that legacy forward, but with new bright ideas and embracing those ideas and technology, you can end up with a better result. Or in that process, you could end up abandoning the things that people associate with your studio, at which point the name doesn't even matter. And like I said, that gets kind of muddy in the case of Bioware because what really identifies Bioware and their franchises? That you make different decisions that impact the story, I guess you could say some of their writing tropes, some of the dark humor involved in a lot of them. But as a studio, they've always been trying new stuff. So that makes it really complicated on what's to blame. But I do think that the context of this matters because it's not like Bioware is dying. I just don't think it's even born yet. It doesn't have its new identity. It's at this moment in time that they're kind of defining what the next generation of Bioware is. And it is that next generation that has to carry this Dragon Age torch and that Mass Effect 5 torch forward. And I'm worried on how they're going to do it, but that doesn't mean that I'm thinking it's going to be terrible. At the end of the day, we'll have to wait and see. And if I am going to build expectations towards Mass Effect 5, positive or negative, I'll do it after playing the Veil vale Guard, because they themselves have confirmed that their new work pipeline is that a lot of the Mass Effect 5 team is working on the Veil vale Guard. They unified everything in order to make production better, which is how a lot of Mass Effect has ended up injected into this new Dragon Age entry. Which means that it's this entire team making the Veil vale Guard that's going to be responsible for Mass Effect 5. And that's why I think it'll be pretty fair to set our expectations for Mass Effect 5 based on what the Veil vale Guard is. Now, because of some stuff we're going to talk about later, I don't really expect this to be a Bloober Team type of redemption story. I don't think that people have really negative expectations towards Dragon Age of the Veil vale Guard, and they're going to come out with a universally beloved game. I think it's going to be hated by a lot of people no matter what, it's going to be enjoyed well enough by a group of other people, and some people will really enjoy it. It's going to be that phrase that was the bane of all video game writing for about 20 years, a mixed bag. But some of that comes with the territory, which is why we have to talk about Dragon Age. Now, Dragon Age as a franchise, for those of you who don't know, was conceived as a spiritual successor to Baldur's Gate too. Bioware wanted to keep working on stuff like Baldur's Gate and Neverwinter Nights, but they didn't have the Dungeons and Dragons IP available anymore. So they decided to create their own entire universe created by David Gator called Dragon Age. And Origins was meant to be a spiritual successor to Baldur's Gate 2. The entire universe of Dragon Age is pretty damn cool. While having a lot of the hallmarks of fantasy, it still manages to have its own quite unique identity with its own political intrigue and magic system and a bunch of stuff. It's really good in case you're not familiar with it. The point here is that all three of the Dragon Age games we've gotten so far are very different. And this is one of the things I don't understand of the criticism towards the Veil vale Guard, is people saying that it betrays what Dragon Age is supposed to be. But Dragon Age has never been a consistent thing, so I think that what they're trying to say is that it betrays what they would like Dragon Age to be. Sure, there's a large group of people that want it to go back to what it was in Dragon Age Origins, which is a top-down CRPG, but I'm sure there's plenty of people that don't want it to be that because there were two other games that weren't like that. I think most people like Dragon Age 1, although I know some people who don't like it 
precisely because it's a CRPG, but everything regarding Dragon Age is a toss-up of which ones of the three games you like or dislike. The first one is a CRPG, the second one kind of went with this uh, edgy style, a little bit more new metal early 2000s type of vibe, despite not being from that era, uh, and a little bit more of an action focus, kind of took some cues from Mass Effect, it's the one I like the least, but it's still a good game. And Dragon Age Inquisition is kind of like a single player MMO, including the open areas and quest structure, and I actually really like it. Revisionism has made it look like it's the worst game ever made or something, but even at launch, a ton of people like that game. Its problems were still there. Please get out of the hinterlands as a meme regarding how you should do everything possible to just move the story onwards. Don't get bogged down in doing all of the side quests in the open areas. But I personally really enjoyed it, and I've got a thing for single-player MMO-style combat. I'm a huge Xenoblade Chronicles fan. No, to each their own. So really, Dragon Age at this point can only be judged by what it does have in common throughout those games, which is that universe, some of the style of writing, the decisions you make, having an impact on future stuff that happens, the consistent humor throughout all three of the games, which I personally find quite charming and funny. I think a lot of people now associate a band of heroes that are always quipping about stuff to be this MCU style writing, and that's just not really true. That's always been kind of the Dungeons and Dragons hallmark and fantasy hallmark of a lot of stuff. Even the fellowship itself in some ways is like that. Sure, the quality with which it's executed is different, but having a band of heroes that are constantly bickering and quipping at each other is just how most D&D inspired things go, because that's how it ends up on the tabletop game, or at least the ones I've been a part of have. And really, that's how Dragon Age has been since the start, very similarly to Mass Effect. Even when the stakes are very high, people are gonna jab at each other and make some funny comments to show off their personality. And that seems to be alive and well in the Veilguard. Vale Most of the things that identify Dragon Age seem to be there, with some choices that I don't like, because what are these Kunari? What are they? This is not a Kunari. <laughs> like, uh, you, you can't convince me that it is. Yeah, whatever. I aesthetically don't think the new game looks great. But the point is, these games are more about what connects them than what doesn't. And I don't understand the fervor around how it's ruining Dragon Age, because that's kind of the issue with it. Sure, now that we're on the fourth game, this idea that each one is just so different from the last is now compounding, and the entire fan base keeps fracturing. There's people who want it to be more in the style of any of the other three, and now it's doing its own completely different thing. And while the reasons for them doing that very well could be, we want to make sure it's accessible to newer players that would just jump into this game for the first time, it is still consistent with what they've always done, so... And they'll probably suffer the consequences of it just like they've always done, because a lot of previous fans won't like the new game, a lot of fans will, it'll be a, a mix. But what is that game, and why am I so personally mixed on it? Because I am personally rooting for it. Look, the more good games, the better. I don't want games to be bad. I really like playing good video games. If anything, I think the fact that I'm always looking for the best in games and trying to love them as much as I can is my biggest strength as a reviewer, because when I don't have anything positive to say about a game, you know it's bad, but I'm hesitant here for a couple of reasons and okay with it for some other reasons. Now look, I don't normally check out previews, but I'm a huge Dragon Age fan, so I did check out, like, all of them for this game. And to me, it looks like a very logical evolution of something like Mass Effect mixed with God of War 2018. The first person I heard compare it to that was actually Austin over at Skillup, with a preview that I think is pretty good. But the structure is pretty much Mass Effect, which is the same as many other games. You have a hub like you used to have the Normandy, except now it's this lighthouse area. You have your companions, and then you go out on missions, which could very well just be moving to a new planet in Mass Effect, right? You sometimes have these hub-like, slightly open-world environments in which to talk to people and engage in quests, and then you go down different paths to complete your objectives. And during those paths, you have little splinters of them to side stuff, to little areas with additional puzzles to solve that will grant you loot. 
And a lot of the way that loot system works is very similar to God of War. You have different armors and weapons and you can slot runes into them with passive and active effects. And the combat has been described as very God of War like, which to me, that's good. And from what I've seen in the previews of the people who really dug through the skill trees and the options, seems like there's a lot of build crafting in this game where you can take different armors and runes that you've discovered and the different skill trees for each of the three main classes and the three subclasses that you can choose within each of those and come up with something really powerful and cool that feels unique, like you designed it, you were smart for coming up with it, and then you used it to decimate your enemies and you figured out how to combo it with some of your companions. It has the prime and detonation system that was present in Anthem way back when, which was a good system of certain skills are primers and others can detonate those primed enemies for tons of damage. And the general dodging and attacking looks fast and flashy and cool. So having a more slightly character action with time stopping tactical RPG stuff in the middle throughout a 60 hour game where you get to do that in tons of new locations and hopefully with a bunch of enemy variety sounds completely up my alley. Not having it be a massive open world or something like that is very refreshing because I don't like wasting my time doing a bunch of meaningless stuff. I like it a bit more when games at this point understand that padding itself out isn't going to do you any favors. So here's the path. Talk to these people, then go down here, engage in fun gameplay, make your decisions, move on to the next thing. All of that to me seems very promising, but only if it's appealing to you is the whole thing. This combat system might be rough around the edges, and some people who are more into this sort of combat system will probably find stuff to love in it, but many others won't be convinced by it. Many others who are expecting something different won't enjoy it. Especially the people who think that this isn't Dragon Age. Which again, you're entitled to that opinion, it's just that Dragon Age is weird, it always has been, and I think that at this point the healthiest way to approach it is take it as it comes. And I think that goes just the same for the story that they're trying to tell and where they're going to place their emphasis on. And no, I'm not going to talk about the leaks because I've seen people with the leaks and then I've seen people saying those leaks make no sense and are completely false. And then I've seen people saying parts of the leaks are true. So I'm, I'm just going to wait for reviews and wait to play it myself, more importantly. But ignoring those leaks from the previews, we've seen people say that some of the dialogue here isn't the sharpest. We've seen people say that the performances are not really the best and that maybe that improves over time as you move into the further acts of the game, but also maybe the story and the choices and how they impact the things you do are not as meaningful as they seem at the start, that they're a bit more of crafting an illusion, but they can't tell you for sure because they haven't experienced the full game. But I like to say that where there's smoke, there tends to be fire. Along with all of those concerns regarding how they're going to handle the story, I have seen a lot of reports that the game does indeed veer towards the dark sides. Some of those darker shades of that storytelling and a lot of the theming that we saw in previous Dragon Age games, but that it does clash quite a lot with the art style, which I still don't like. I'm sure that after playing the game for 60 hours or whatever, it probably grows on you, but that doesn't mean I have to like it. It's just something that you probably end up tolerating or finding some positives in. I don't like the way that this game looks. It feels like everything has been airbrushed in a way that is meant to make it palatable to kids, like some of those AI generated things that you see on YouTube to siphon attention from toddlers, or some of those aesthetics that try to imitate Pixar, but like badly, like they put a smoothing filter over it. And I say that while also saying that I think that a lot of the combat seems to look really good, as in the actual animations and the effects and how things are going on. And at the same time, I also kind of think the UI is very cluttered and looks pretty bad. It might look a lot better once you're in it because it might serve a useful purpose in its distribution once you're actually playing the game. But just watching it, uh, I, I don't like it. I can say that the only thing I'm truly no complaints on is that structure, is that more guided 
hey, this is your area. This is where you pick up side quests. This is where those side quests lead you. This is where the main quest goes. Do your stuff. And I'm very aware that a lot of people are not going to like that. A lot of people coming from either other RPGs or previous Dragon Age games, once again, depending on the one you like, are going to think that's like a betrayal of what the franchise should be. I honestly think I might be in the minority here that's just like, I don't know, we'll see when it comes out. <laughs> and that's the thing, that if the combat isn't for you, and you're here for the storytelling, and you're expecting it to be a grand adventure like Mass Effect 2 with that level of writing and character building and investment into it, uh, you probably will come away disappointed, I suspect. At the end of the day, this is a completely new team, and what they decide to do with Dragon Age and its legacy and the universe that they've built is a very important question, because that's one of the few things that keeps Dragon Age consistent. And if they start messing with the lore and with the universe and the characterization of some things, then it gets really iffy. Be that how they handle returning characters, or be that how they handle the story in general, because if they apply changes to the narrative or to the tone of things in the same way that they've changed how the Kunari look, that, that'll be bad. The biggest red flag though for me is how they haven't sent out review codes. I had seen different reports on some forums about this, and then my Discord was kind enough to show me that Wolfheart FPS, RPG content creator extraordinaire, did preview the game, but was not sent a review code and he does point out that of the content creators he's aware of three were more highly critical of what they played and none of them were sent review code others who were very positive were also not sent review code and ea in general has been kind of sketchy about sending those codes out and i would not put it past ea to be trying to manipulate the metacritic to come out as high as possible while being wary of people who might be giving opinions that don't fall in line with what they want to represent. The reason that this worries me greatly is because of everything I've been talking about up until now. I don't expect Dragon Age the Veilguard to be bad, but I don't expect it to be something everybody loves. It's a complicated history for the studio, for the franchise, and I think this is just going to continue that complicated history. This means that it doesn't matter how many glowing reviews you see, it doesn't matter if the Metacritic for this game ends up being a 90, we already have evidence of some access journalism going on here because it's really strange to put on a gigantic preview event where you invite literally everybody and their mother to check out this game before it's done, and then when it comes to the actual review codes, you don't send them out to all of those people. That's much easier and cheaper to do than flying everybody out for the preview. You just open Discord or Gmail and send a code. Uh, sometimes you have to sign some stuff beforehand, that's it. And while there's a whole conversation to be had about access journalism and how they send these review codes early or not, what I'm focusing down on here is not that the game is going to be terrible. It's that there's going to be people who are going to try and be more informative about why you maybe shouldn't buy the game, about why it's probably not for you, or they will be able to recognize the quality in some aspects of the game, but still say that it's not for them and that they didn't enjoy them, which are some of the most important reviews possible when it comes to you saving your time and your money. When people have asked me about the Veil Guard and if I have any opinions so far or if I would preemptively recommend it or not, what's my gut feeling on it? I've said that I don't know and that you should probably, for this game more than many others that we've seen over the years, check with the reviewers that you really trust, that really align with your preferences, because I think that it's going to be a pretty complicated mess. And in that, there's some people that are going to love what the game puts on offer, and there's people who are not going to like that. And if you're concerned about spending your money on the game, you should probably listen to the people that are more aligned with you. But now, a lot of those people probably don't have review codes and won't be able to inform you at launch. Tensions are very high pretty much with everything these days, and it's why videos like this are warranted on many occasions, because I, I think we really do need just kind of a bit more of a of a 
grounded take on some stuff and not just like oh every single press and journal and content creator is a sellout if they said that the game looks good but that is also slightly suspicious and also uh, goes against a lot of sentiment i've seen from many people and as i hope i've showed throughout this video it's for a large list of reasons like this isn't dragon age but what is dragon age and this isn't bioware but what is bioware and just a ton of different feelings around that that I think are legitimate concerns for stuff. And there's all sorts of reasons everywhere and everybody is entitled to their opinions and to their concerns around this game. And for me, the biggest one is, what are they doing? Is it good? It doesn't matter to me that they're taking this game in a completely different direction or how much it's changing. It's if that change is positive. If there is a glimmer of hope here, maybe even potentially a great game with that big asterisk of for some people, not for everybody who has ever touched the Bioware game before, and that maybe I can have hope that Mass Effect 5 could be good. I also think it's really important to remember the fact that this is a pretty complete video game. When it comes to the business practices going on here, as far as we know, this is something that I would like to be good. I would like to support the idea of a video game coming out that doesn't have an early access phase, that isn't pushing you 17 premium editions, doesn't come loaded with 14 microtransactions or extra content DLCs. It's just, hey, this is the full game. Not only that, the game is coming out with no DRM which is great. That's how most games should be. There's a lot of like positive stuff going on with this game that I would like to champion, at least when it comes to the business side of things, but that requires the game to also be really good. No matter what though, I will be here. If there is something important within my first hours of playing the game, maybe the first 15 hours or so, I will put out an initial video saying, hey, uh, I don't like this, or I like this, or this is my general feeling on it. If I think it's important to inform potential buyers, people who are still on the fence as quickly as possible. And depending on how good the game is, I might do a full review if I finish it. I have a lot of other projects that I'm very excited about, but I am a huge Dragon Age fan. So for me, the real test of this will be, does the game drag me in enough that I want to keep playing. So I guess my ultimate review of it will be uh, my community post where I'm like, yeah, I'm not going to keep playing Dragon Age. That's me saying I, I don't recommend it, I guess. We'll see how everything shakes out. I'm overall excited to play the game because potential is exciting. If it is amazing and I have great things to say about it, that's fun. If it's a good game with some issues, that's always an interesting video to make. And if it's terrible, I'm sure that a lot of people are desperate to feast on the corpse of Bioware. <laughs> so I don't rule anything out. I'm just excited to get my hands on it. And for you, I hope that it'll be entertaining. And no matter what your feelings are on the situation, take it one step at a time and pay extra special attention to the reviewers involved in this if you are looking for those pre-release reviews. Remember that there is some access journalism going on and that you want to make sure that those opinions reflect yours because it's not as simple as it seems. You have to take a lot of the history that people have with the studio and the franchise into consideration when somebody's giving you their opinion on it. In any case, I've been Mug, and if you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit the like button. And if you want more from me, all sorts of videos related to gaming, hit subscribe. The channel's been doing really well. A lot of the comments have been incredibly nice. I'm doing everything I can to really solidify the style of the channel and my voice and make sure that every video is better than the ones before. So if you want to come along for that ride, yeah, hit the button. A very special thanks to the patrons up on the $1 patron wall. It's called that way because there's only one tier. $1, but they all support everything that I do every single day. And I'm very grateful for them. I need to redesign the patron wall. I should get on that like right now because you guys keep filling it up and it's incredibly awesome. I'm, I'm so happy. Thank you. And as always, go out there, enjoy some great video games, and I'll see you again very soon.